Rebecca works in a large international company. One day, she comes back to the office from lunch and finds her colleagues extremely agitated. Oh, they hurry to tell the girl that someone knocked their HR manager out just an hour ago. The police have three suspects. Laura is an applicant. She says she was a bit angry with the HR manager. After all, he made her wait for ages, well past the time of her appointment. She stayed outside in the rain and probably caught a cold. And still, Laura says, I would never hit him. Plus, I'm too weak to do it. Gary, who works in the marketing department, claims he hasn't seen the HR manager since he arrived at work. He was having a meeting from the very morning till lunchtime. Jacob, from Research and Development, tells the police he rode his bike to a coffee shop to get his cappuccino. He's just come back. Who knocked the HR manager out? It was Jacob. Both his bike and his clothes are dry and clean. How is it possible if it's raining outside? Jack is participating in a challenge. He's got to the last stage which takes place in a desert. If he succeeds now, he'll win $1 million. Jack needs to get a key out of one of the four pots. On top of the first pot, there's a bowl filled with a strong acid. The second pot is covered with a bowl full of venomous spiders. In the bowl placed on the third pot, Jack sees a raging fire. A viper is curled up in the bowl covering the fourth pot. Jack isn't allowed to drop the bowls or turn them over. Which pot should he choose? The guy should choose the third bowl. He can put the fire out with the sand and get the key. Jacob is the owner of a small IT company. Larry is his subordinate, exceptionally talented, and just as forgetful. More often than not, he seems to be lost in his head. Such things as going on a trip out of the blue without notifying anybody is typical for this genius. Normally, the boss turns a blind eye to Larry's quirks. But this time, an important business meeting is about to start. Jacob needs the data Larry has been working on. But the guy is nowhere to be found. He doesn't answer his phone, so no one can reach him. One hour before the meeting has to begin, Jacob can't wait any longer. He switches on Larry's computer, but it's password locked. The man tries some random combination of letters and numbers, but of course, it's wrong. Suddenly, a tiny window appears on the screen. In this window, Jacob sees what seems to be a riddle. Little, little, late, late. After puzzling over it for a while, the man types something in the window and sees the home screen. The computer is unlocked! What has Jacob written? The answer to this rebus is too little, too late. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. The folder with the needed data is also protected by a password. When Jacob clicks on it, that's what he sees. Write backward all the numbers. Hmm. Sounds like a tough task. Luckily, Jacob knows how Larry's brain works. He doesn't need much information to write the correct answer and, finally, get the information. What is the password? And there you have it! That's the phrase, all the numbers written backward. Camilla was terrified of dogs. One day, she was jogging in the park and noticed a large dog sitting near the bench. It looked unfriendly. Uh The leash attached to the dog's collar was three feet long. Camilla decided it would be safe to pass by if there was at least seven feet of space between her and the pooch. But even being on a leash, the dog still managed to bite her. How come? Sadly, the leash wasn't tied to anything. David's company develops new apps for smartphones. Right now, he's looking for a designer. He's got hundreds of applicants, but has chosen just three of them. 
Angela's resume says, I'm 23 years old. I don't have a lot of experience, but I'm a fast learner and have already designed similar applications. Helen wrote in her resume, I'm 26 and have 4 years of work experience. You should hire me because I've created lots of TikTok stories that have gone viral. And Eric's resume claims he's 28 years old with 7 years of work experience. He's designed tons of apps. He's been working for Google since the company was launched. David can hire only one person. But it's okay because only one applicant hasn't lied in their resume. Who is it? Eric has just 7 years of work experience, but Google was officially launched in 1998. There are no stories on TikTok, meaning Helen couldn't create them. David hired Angela. Even though she hasn't been working that long, she's honest and has a nice portfolio. Kevin, a security guard in an amusement park, finds a boy standing near a roller coaster. The kid says his name's Nick. He doesn't know where his dad is. Kevin takes Nick to his office and makes an announcement. Soon after that, two men show up at the door. The first exclaims, We were in a cafe, but after eating my burger, I felt so sick, I had to spend almost 20 minutes in the bathroom. When I got out, Nick wasn't around. I was so worried. The other man interrupts him. We rode a roller coaster together. Then I told Nick to wait there and went to get us some hot dogs. Which man is Nick's father? Nick is too small to ride the roller coaster, which means the second man is lying. The boy's dad is the unlucky guy with food poisoning. Aiden fell madly in love with a beautiful girl, Ella. He tried to spend all his time with her. The man bought her expensive presents and flowers, invited her to the best restaurants, organized yacht trips. They traveled the world, stayed in famous hotels, and went shopping for designer clothes. In less than a year, Aiden became a millionaire. How is it possible? Well, before meeting Ella, the guy was a billionaire. Carter had a fast and successfully developing company until his main investor went bankrupt. Carter was desperate. He went to visit his best friend Justin, a coffee shop owner. Cheer up, Justin exclaimed. One rich businessman visits my cafe almost every day. He's here today, too. He's very mysterious and doesn't have any social media accounts. Few people know about his wealth, but I do. Go and introduce yourself. Justin pointed toward the back of the coffee shop. Carter went there and saw three men. Uh Uh-oh. He hadn't asked his friend which one was the wealthy entrepreneur. He looked at the men attentively. In no time he figured out who was the one he needed. It isn't the guy in the middle. He has a $1 store bag. The one on the right could be rich, but he's recording an Instagram story. And the businessman isn't active on any social media. This means the man Carter needs is on the left. Carter was right. The guy turned out to be a billionaire. He was impressed with Carter's business. But before signing the papers, he mentioned one condition. Carter had to prove he was prepared for all kinds of stressful situations. The man had nothing to do but agree to the challenge. After that, Carter was taken to a remote house and left alone. He was locked in a large room with no windows and three doors. Suddenly, the ceiling started to go down. At the same time, the room began to fill with water. Carter knew that behind the first door, there was a powerful whirlpool that would take him under the surface in no time. The second door was hiding a school of vicious piranhas. And behind the third one, there was a deep pit with sharp wooden spikes at the bottom. Which door should Carter choose to save his life? Carter picked the third door. Once the pit filled with water, he swam over the spikes and successfully escaped from the trap. 
when he returned to the office, the billionaire had already signed the contract. Three friends agreed to hang out together on Friday night. One of them, Brian, was tasked with bringing pizza. But the guy was running extremely late. His friends were starving. Strangely, Brian wasn't picking up their calls. But in an hour or so, he sent them a selfie. In the photo, he was standing next to his car. In the following message, he wrote he had run out of gas. He was at a gas station, tanking his car up. But his friends didn't believe Brian's excuses. Why? In the picture, it's clearly seen the guy's got an electric car. It doesn't need gas. A wet mystery. Mother and father living in the north of Canada went shopping, leaving their teenage son home. He said he wanted to mount his new TV on the wall. They were halfway to the mall when mother remembered she'd left the iron plugged in. They returned and found the house freezing cold. Mother turned on central heating again, and they left for good. When they came back after a while, there was water dripping from the ceiling on the first floor, and on the second, their son was lying unconscious in a pool of water on the floor, and the TV was hanging on the wall askew. Can you guess what happened? The young man hauled a big chunk of ice upstairs to stand on it while he mounted the TV. He turned off the heat for the ice to stay frozen. But when his mom turned it on again, the chunk melted and the boy slipped and fell. A code number. A detective who had been mere days away from cracking an international criminal gang has suddenly gone missing. But he was smart enough to try and help the investigators in their search by leaving one clue. More specifically, a special code. 710-577-3534-5508-517718. The police have three prime suspects, John, Bill, and Adam. Can you break the detective's code and help the police arrest the right criminal? The numbers in the detective's code represent letters. If you read the message upside down, you'll notice that it says, Bill is boss. He sells oil. So, Bill's your guy. Cuffin' boys. A lousy alibi. A man had been strolling through the park when someone suddenly hit him on the back of the head. Witnesses say the culprit had brown hair, blue eyes, and was wearing a baggy suit. The main suspect is Sean Baker, who matches the description perfectly. The police interrogate Sean, who gives his account of what happened. I was just hanging out in the park, and I saw this man walking along the pathway. Then some other guy suddenly sprang out of the shrubs right in front of him and hit him. I ran home as fast as I could. The police ask him to give a description of the attacker. He answers, he had a red mustache, red hair, and a baggy suit on. However, one of the investigators says Sean is lying. How does he know? Sean claims that the attacker came up in front of the man, but that's complete nonsense. The man had been hit on the back of his head. Strange noises. Amy and Carl were lying in bed at night when they heard weird noises from their daughter Stacy's bedroom. Amy went to see and carefully opened the door, but saw her teenage daughter fast asleep and the noise stopped. The next night, it all happened again, and in the morning, Amy found a snakeskin lying under Emily's bed. Alarmed, the family searched the whole house but couldn't find the snake that left it. Still, the sound persisted every night. Can you guess where the snake was hiding? It was in the walls. At night, when it was quiet, 
the snake would crawl out in the open, but when everyone woke up again, it hid inside the pipes and between the boards. A careless granddaughter Sally went to the drugstore to get some meds for her grandma. The pharmacist looked at the prescription and handed her four identical pills, two for pressure and another two for her legs. He warned Sally that Grandma should take one of each kind a few hours before bedtime. The girl nodded and dropped the pills into her bag. As she got home, Sally realized what she did wrong. There were four completely identical pills in her bag, all mixed up. But when it was time for Grandma to take the pills, Sally figured a way out. What did she do? The only way out of this situation is to split all the pills in half and take one half of each pill. This way, Grandma will definitely get the right meds. The Chicken Matter Sally's grandma, yep, that same one, got three hens that gave her three eggs in three days. When Sally found this out, she decided selling eggs could be a good business. So she got her grandma 12 more hens of the same kind. Sally can't wait to get her profit. Who wouldn't be? But she's not that great at math. Can you help her figure out how many eggs grandma will get in the next 15 days? Three hens brought grandma three eggs in three days. It means one hen brings one egg once in three days. So it'll give five eggs in 15 days. Now that we've got 15 hens, we can easily multiply the numbers and get 75 eggs in 15 days. A window to freedom. Jack is thrown in a cell with a dirt floor and only one window positioned so high no one could reach it. The cell is empty except for a shovel. It's dry and hot in there, but Jack won't get any food or drink anytime soon. He has only two days to break out of his cell. Digging a tunnel would take at least a week. How should Jack escape? He should use the shovel to make a pile of dirt under the window, climb on it, and escape from the cell. Seriously, who secures prisoners this way? Back to school On the first day of the school year, a geography teacher vanished. The police had as many as four suspects. They were the gardener, the math teacher, the coach, and the school principal. The sticking point was that they all had alibis. The gardener was cutting bushes. The math teacher was holding a mid-year test. The coach was playing basketball. The principal was in the office with parents of one of the students. Despite this, the culprit was arrested immediately. Can you guess how the police solved the mystery? The math teacher was lying. According to his words, he was holding a mid-year test, but the geography teacher disappeared on the first day of the school year. Late Delivery A lonely old man lived in his house in the suburbs of a city. He led a quiet life and never left his dwelling for long. It was a midsummer Friday when the mail carrier walked by and called out for the man. There was no answer coming from inside the house. The carrier looked into the window and, oh no! He saw the house was a total mess, and the owner was nowhere to be seen. When the police arrived, they found a Tuesday's newspaper, two bottles of warm milk, and one bottle of cold milk. The next day, the robber was arrested. How did the police find out who it was so quickly? It was obviously the mail carrier. He knew that no one in that house would read a newspaper on Wednesday or Thursday. That's why he only came on Friday. There's chemistry between them. A famous chemist went missing. 
There was no evidence found except for a piece of paper with the names of chemical substances on it. On the day he disappeared, the chemist had only three visitors – his wife, Mary, his nephew, Nicholas, and his friend, Jonathan. The police looked at the note and arrested the culprit right away. Who was it, and how did they find it out? It was Nicholas, the chemist's nephew. If you combine the short names of the chemical substances on the paper, you'll get his name. N-I-C-O-L-A-S. An untouchable car. A man was found unconscious in his own car. The police found a rock near the man, and it was obvious he had been hit on the head with it. But the car windows were intact, and the door was locked. How could someone throw a rock into the car without damaging it? The car was a convertible, and when the rock was thrown, the roof had been down. A public collapse One city was having a rough patch. Its schools, hotels, and public transport weren't functioning because of a strike that had already lasted for several weeks. One night, someone hit the mayor of the city over the head. The man was rushed to a hospital, and the police arrested three suspects. Brandon stated that he had been walking along the street when he heard someone scream, but it was too dark and he couldn't see anything. John confirmed that he had heard a call for help as well, but he was too scared to check it out. As for Dylan, He claimed that he had been waiting for a bus at a bus stop and hadn't heard anything. Who attacked the mayor? It was Dylan. He couldn't be waiting for a bus since they hadn't been running for several weeks because of the strike. 